Hey everyone, this is the Integrated Math 2 Practice Test for 10 Ready. This is the 2017-18 test. Um, question number 7. So, a function is graphed on the coordinate plane. The last year's the last year's version of the test had a similar question, but it used a square root graph. I think they just want to keep the uh, concept behind the math, but they didn't want to have that ugly square root graph freaking everybody out. The thing about this sort of question is it's really just asking you about how you translate from the parent function. So parent function of course is just y equals the absolute value of x. But we're moving all the points. So the easy thing to do is focus on what the vertex is doing. So here's the vertex of the parent function. I'm going 1 2, down 2, so I'm up here in the corner somewhere, I'm going to write down down 2. And then I'm going to go to the left, 1. Or you could say negative to the 1, but I think that would be confusing later, so I'm just going to speak to it in terms of its overall uh, motion as opposed to its positive versus negative values. The way that this works is very similar to how we shift quadratics. When we move quadratics around. So if I have a y equals x squared situation here and here, the vertex is right there, right at 0, 0. If I want to move it vertically, up and down, all I have to do is add a constant number. So y is equal to x squared plus 2. So I go up here. Everything else should stay the same, despite the fact that it won't look like it's staying the same. Trust me, it is. Everything else just stays the same. And really they're sort of telling us that in this form. So this is really x plus 0. So the story being told when I take out the quadratic term y is equal to 0. y is equal to 2. That's what it's telling me. So going back to the idea that they're related, if I'm down 1, 2, since it's going down that would be negative, I might go ahead and start and I'll do it in a blue over here start a sample answer x something because I haven't messed with the x term or the quadratic term or in this case the absolute term um, and if it's down to that's minus 2 because over here if I had done y is equal to x squared minus 2 here and here there you go now related to that is that's a vertical shift. What about a horizontal shift? Go left to right. Well that's where we would put things either inside the absolute or for working with the quadratic. So I have this. I'd put it inside parentheses. This is the one that's more complicated just because it's counterintuitive. You see minus 2, so you think, okay, I'm going to move it to the left. But it doesn't work that way. If your teacher, and I'm sure you felt like it was torture, made you do input-output tables for these, so you graphed, substituted in values for x and found the matching y value, and then built the graph, graph up from scratch when you worked on quadratics, what they've done is try to develop the idea that it seems what it looks like isn't always what it says. So if I do x minus 2 in an input output table it will help me to develop here's of course my original x squared is just here. So if I'm doing plus 3 it would be up here but instead of going to the left this one actually goes to the right. And the reason is because in vertex form, we actually have a negative what's called h value. So my new uh, vertex here is at 2, 3. So there's my vertex. With vertex form, though, you're looking at this formula. So when I substitute in the 3, it just does what it says. When I substitute in positive 2 here, it becomes x minus 2. So even though it looks like it should go to the left, it goes to the right. 
when I think about it, I sort of say, you know, K is either MK or OK, so you might want to do OK there. And for H, I just write, what the H? What the heck? What the H? Uh, and if I say, what the H, over and over again, it means it's like, what are you doing, H? You're not doing what I want you to do. So instead of the 2 being uh, positive in the equation, it's actually minus, because I have to adjust for that shift. Similarly, in our question that we've been working on from the beginning, the transformation from the parent function of this absolute value, it moved 1 to the left. But in the what the H world, what the heck? I have to show plus 1 instead of minus 1. So in my final answer, I get y is the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 2. So my answer to this one is p. The upside to this question is if you remembered that k is k or ok, and then uh, you could get the answer immediately because it was the only one <laughs> that had that choice, but the test itself will likely have something where you'll have to address the idea of oh, things being ok, and then what the h. So fix those issues. There you go. Thanks.